Wait. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes. Woo. I'm your host, Morgan. Hi. I'm trying to figure this new thing out. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I think I just broke it. Is it bad? Oh my god. You sound normal. I know. It's just on yours. I don't know why. Hello? <laughs> We're shutting it down. <laughs> Start over. I'm not going to mess with it anymore. With my luck, I won't be able to figure out how to get it back again. <laughs> so no more sound effects. Um, but welcome back to another episode of Two Hot Takes, you guys. Today I'm joined by the one, the only, Dason Afwalo. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> There's my sound effect I was looking for. <laughs> it's not as good as the other one, but I appreciate it for sure. It, it would have been unreal, <laughs> but you're just going to have to take my word for it. I'll show you at the end when we're done. Okay. okay. And it's, there's no more, <laughs> there's no no more pressure. No yeah. more work to be done. Yeah. Um, but Dason has a show with her sister Drew called Two Idiot Girls. You've seen Dason yeah. before. You should remember her. It's under the Two Hot Takes Network. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> <laughs> Our little network. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Dason... Yeah, I feel like last time you were on with Drew, I just, I didn't give you enough airtime. It was, I was in the middle, like you said, like a ball, like or a dog watching the ball. Yeah. That's how I felt in the middle. I but. know. I, I, I should have been in the middle. No, it's okay. I'm going to be in the middle later today. Okay, I forgive you. It's okay. For my dad's show, so it'll be good. <laughs> but today, um, life has just been crazy. I don't know if you have been on TikTok watching the Selena Haley drama. Oh my gosh. It's the way wild. people make things up is wild. It's honestly insane. It's It's been blowing my mind all week. And like, I'm not on a side. I'm just like, they'll, it's life. They'll figure it out. Yeah. But Haley Bieber can stop parking in the handicapped spots <laughs> at hey, if Hot you wanted, Pilates. Yeah. If you wanted to stop doing that, that'd be great. That'd be great, Haley yeah. and Kendall. They park in the handicapped spots because it's, it's too far for them to walk. That's so weird. It's really it pisses me off. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I found out that Haley... Bieber's aunt was the lady who was on Family Feud and created that Holy Spirit activate. I did activate, see that. Yeah. Activate. And as I was going through some of these stories today, <laughs> it just gave me that vibe. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to activate the Holy Spirit. Today? I hope somebody does. Because oh, okay. these people, they need it. They need some divine intervention. Yeah, I feel that. So, I mean, that was on Family Feud? Family Feud. And poor Steve Little Harvey, he's just like, Looking around, he's like, that's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? He was just distraught. Yeah. I, it was the weirdest thing. That is really weird. It was before like the fast money at the end and like Oh, okay, okay. It was just freaky. Every time I've heard that audio, I thought it was at like a live, like those churches that are on like regular TV. Yeah. That would make sense. That's their vibe, <laughs> yeah. honestly. That's like, I guess they're kind of culty. Yeah. That side of the fam. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, people are like, did you know that's her animal? Isn't her dad a Baldwin? That's kind of a big deal too. Yeah, he's, and it's like one of the ones that is like super conservative, right? Yeah, he's um. There's a that Hillsong Church or yeah. whatever it is out here that Justin was kind of a part of. Yeah, and then yeah, that yeah. Stuff came out with the pastor. Yeah. Um, I think he was really involved in that. That's why, like, oh, of course, I'm I'm very on this side of TikTok, you guys. <laughs> but Justin went on the Ellen show, and Demi Lovato was the guest yes. co-host. And Demi was like, What's how, like, how was your marriage? Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, it was an arranged marriage. <gasps> yeah, Ew. now that I think about it, I think it was arranged. Ew. And it's like, you can't tell if he's joking. Yeah. Or if he's kind of serious. But that's the vibe for this <laughs> week. <laughs> wow, I can't wait. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to mess us up. Like, honestly, some of these stories just... It's, I'm scared. It's dangerous. <laughs> it's dangerous out here. So let's dive in. Let's do it. Okay, so when I first had your sister on, I gave her a necklace story. Okay. And I feel like it's only fair to give you one, too. I guess. I guess. <laughs> this one is coming from Am I the Asshole? It is titled, Am I the Asshole for Asking My Fiancé to Not Wear His Brother's Necklace on Our Wedding Day? Note, me and my fiancé get along really well with everything else, but we've just had a disagreement with this. 
He wears his late brother's ring on his right hand and his brother's necklace. I can get behind the ring because you don't really notice it as much, but the necklace is more noticeable. It has his brother's, brother's wife, and their daughter's initials engraved on it. I asked him if he'd take off the necklace just for our wedding day. I also have a necklace I got as a gift from my mom that I'm not wearing on the day because it doesn't go with my dress. It's just one day and he can wear the ring if he wants. My fiance refused and said it's his brother's and he's going to wear it. Am I the asshole? Yeah. (laughs) The brother passed away. He's not going to be there. Maybe that's his way of honoring his brother every day by wearing it. And then Mm -hmm. why would he not want to honor him at the wedding? It's literally a fucking necklace. You can wear it under. Like, I'm like, you can tuck it in. Unless he like demands it's on top of everything, I guess. But even then, I don't think it's that big of a deal that he wants to wear it. I think it's crazy. OP has like since deleted basically all of their posts. Like they oh. really condensed it down. Okay. It's kind of interesting. There's a bunch of comments too. And like it doesn't get better. Like it, there's more to the story? Yeah. What? It absolutely does not get better. So someone comments and they go, you're the asshole. This obviously (laughs) means a great deal to him and they can't be there in person. Mm -hmm. It was okay to ask him, but he said, no, leave it alone. You're focusing more on image and aesthetics than the true meaning of it and why he wears it. Why does it bother you so much that his sister-in-law and daughter's initials are engraved on it for your wedding? And so Opie goes, if it was just his brother, I'd kind of get it but it's also the brother's wife and their kid's initials on it. So essentially, he'd be wearing a whole other family's name <laughs> on our wedding day. It's not like an ex-girlfriend's name or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so that would piss me off. I'd be like, yeah. we, like, we're not even getting married taked off the necklace. That's a little weird. Yeah, but if it, like his brother wore it, I don't think that's weird. I think she's weird. So someone asks and goes, info, why didn't this necklace go to his brother's wife or kid? Mm. OP goes, They've also passed. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait. This, and she doesn't want him wearing it? All of the kids passed too? Did they like all die together? I'm going to see if there's any comments elaborating like so far. Yeah. Um, but uh, one would assume they all died in a tragic accident yeah. together. Like three people taken out like that. What? Maybe he wants to honor all of them. I just got full body chills. That makes me so annoyed. <laughs> Why would you get <laughs> mad about that? Honestly, I hope he calls off the wedding. Yeah. I hope he calls off the wedding. This person is why would you evil. Call, why would you respond? Honestly, they're all dead. What? <laughs> why? Even, I wouldn't even admit that. I'd be like, I don't know. He's weird. Like, I would lie. I'm not going to be that honest. <laughs> That's crazy. So write that out and be like, send. That's the thing. Like, you wrote this, yeah. bitch. Like, you, you didn't realize, like, that maybe it's a what way What you're of- saying is awful. <laughs> honoring them yeah oh my god a bunch of people edited their votes um so someone goes like no assholes here but i'm leaning more on his side and then edited to change you're the asshole following reply from op (laughs) just kidding you are (laughs) yeah so people are kind of realizing like yeah uh, and I, i know i mentioned like the tucking the shirt thing and so i'm reading this one um, right now and it says why do you care if he wears the necklace I'm assuming he would be wearing the necklace underneath his dress shirt and it will not be visible much anyways you should be happy that you're marrying someone who loves his late brother and yeah. wants to honor him aesthetics are less important mm-hmm. and OP goes no he won't be tucking it into his shirt it's going to be out oh you're right <laughs> he's the asshole sucks <laughs> I'm glad you sucks. clarified <laughs> that's going to be the most disgusting thing in all of your wedding pictures all I'm going to be thinking about is that necklace why is he wearing that every wedding picture I'm going to see that <laughs> necklace it's not like a photographer could photo it, photoshop it out for one or tell him put it away for one and then take it out for the rest of them yeah. I don't know so just, the one picture she wants is done mm-mm, mm-mm. no unacceptable oh my god that's crazy I don't understand people like this like you are so heartless Mm -hmm. and like unself-aware too you know what I mean oh my god absolutely that's weird this whole family was wiped off the map and how dare you honor them at my wedding yeah what (laughs) I think that's a problem for a lot of brides and I know I've been like I'm not engaged even but I when you think about a wedding you're like I want this I want that I want to do it here and Mm. I'm like wait it's not just my wedding. Yeah. And I think a lot of these bridezillas that go fucking apeshit on Reddit with mm-hmm. these dumb problems. <laughs> this is dumb. Yeah. This is dumb. 
But I, I think they forget, like, this is more than just a day. Yeah. This signifies the rest of your life mm -hmm. with this person. And you're showing him that you're a heartless yeah. fucking brat. I, especially because this is like the start of their new life together and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's a lot. <laughs> I would be calling it off. Yeah. I would absolutely be calling mm. it off. Okay, moving along. <laughs> it doesn't, I don't think it gets better. Though. What? <laughs> <laughs> so this next one. Am I the asshole for telling someone they're selfish for asking a 22-year-old to become a child's guardian? My 22 female boyfriend, Malcolm, 22 male, has a half-sister, Elena, 12 female. They have the same dad, and he's not involved in their lives. Their moms became close friends, and they were raised seeing one another. Malcolm's mom moved abroad a couple of years ago. Elena's mom, Sandra, was diagnosed with cancer last year. She went through treatment, but it's been determined that there's nothing they can do but make her comfortable. Sandra will pass sometime this year. She has no other family. Malcolm has spent a lot of time helping care for Elena, driving her to school, making them meals, etc. Recently, Malcolm sat me down. He said that Sandra asked to speak to him. She said she understood if the answer was no, but asked for him to take on custody of Elena sooner rather than later, that way, she could adjust to him being her guardian before she passes. Malcolm would move in with them, and Sandra had a sizable life insurance policy and an accountant to help him care for Elena. To my surprise, he agreed to all of this without consulting me. I pointed this out, and he said, we've only been together for six months. I asked, didn't he feel too young for all of this? He said, sort of, but he'd do it for Elena. Without further discussion, he subleased his apartment and moved in with Sandra and Elena. Saturday, I stopped by to pick up Malcolm for lunch. He hadn't returned from work yet, so I was waiting with Sandra. We were making small talk. She mentioned how grateful she was for Malcolm and that he was a sweet boy. I asked if he was really her only option. I mentioned his mom. Sandra said Elena is losing enough. She doesn't want to force her to move abroad on top of everything. She also doesn't feel right asking Malcolm's mom to move back. I said I found the whole thing a little selfish. Malcolm is only 22. He shouldn't be tied down raising a child. Sandra got defensive and said she wished she didn't have to ask him. Plus, he said yes. I asked what else was he supposed to say. Sandra told me I was upsetting her and asked me to leave. Malcolm called me later, screaming at me. He said that I upset Sandra. I said I was trying to defend him and point out options she may not have thought of. Malcolm told me to butt out and to get on board with this or walk away. He hasn't spoken to me since. I saw Elena at the mall on Sunday, and she ignored me. My mom told me I screwed up big time. Am I the asshole? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, like, I liked that the mom was like, I didn't act, like, I don't want him to have to do that. Honestly, if it were my choice, I would be her mom. I That's don't I really think she would want. want to die. <laughs> yeah. If it were my choice, I wouldn't, but it's not, so. I don't want to have terminal cancer. Like, <laughs> she's like, maybe try not having cancer. <laughs> she might as well just said that to her. That's crazy. You're selfish. Yeah. yeah. You're telling a dying woman she's selfish for trying to ensure that her daughter, who is... A 12 year old mm -hmm. is taken care of when she's gone. And then he, the way he went, we've only been together six months. Relax. It's not that serious. I love that he said that. <laughs> we haven't even, we don't live together. Why would I tell you? Six months is nothing. Mm -mm. I don't like, do you know their middle name at six months? Mm -mm. I mean, the fact that she even knows all of this at six months, that's, that's a lot of information to know about someone for sure. Yeah. I mean, at six months, I didn't even know if Justin wiped standing or sitting. And that's important to know. And these are important questions to ask your significant <laughs> I'd other. I'd be more worried about that than whatever she's worried about. Right I think she probably sees it as like, this is going to impact her life with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. His attention is not going to be just on her. It's oh. someone's coming between them. <laughs> Poor thing. Oh. <laughs> it's just, it's baffling. It's like, versus like seeing the flip side where it's like, my boyfriend's amazing. Mm-hmm. He is such a caring, kind, empathetic. He's giving up all this to, you know. Yeah, because he's only 22. Yeah, that's, that's, that's that is really young. You're right. but It's not ideal. Yeah, but it's his sister. It's also his sister. It's not like a family friend. 
a cousin. Yeah. Even a cousin I could kind of see, but if it's like my mom's best friend's daughter, so like she's just my friend. Yeah. Like that could, that's kind of a lot, but I would he would probably still do it. Yeah. But it's his literal sister. A little sister that he sounds like he's pretty close with. Yeah. Well, too. and then the fact that she didn't grow up with a dad and neither did he, maybe he could be that parental like father figure to her as well. Mm-hmm. That's like weirdo shit to be like, what are you doing? It sounds like it's just jealousy and literally like of a 12 year old sister. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's not like, I mean, by the sounds of it too, there's a life insurance policy and an accountant. It doesn't sound like he's even going to have to contribute financially. No. Or take on like a bunch of debt or, you know what I mean? Like, like a house. Yeah. Like that would be a lot to have to navigate. Yeah. Oh my God. But it's just being her guardian. <laughs> what? It's baffling. There's a lot of these stories, though, that come up where, like, siblings will take on younger yeah. siblings when their parents die. And I saw one where this woman adopted her two younger siblings, mm-hmm. um, and the sibling grew up and was like, after their like, their older sister had kids, they were like, you didn't treat me like that. And it's like, she was 18 yeah. when she adopted you. I didn't have a job. Like, yeah, I was a completely different person. It's just insane, mm-hmm. people. So the top comment on this one is Redbox, a bunch of awards. And it's only from 12 hours ago. Like, this whole post is <laughs> 12 hours ago. It's really fresh. Mm-hmm. And it's, you're the asshole. I swear to God, if I see one more not the asshole on this thread, I'll lose my faith in humanity. You should listen to your mother. Sounds like she's a smart woman. Malcolm got lucky. He just got a glimpse into your soul when you let your mask slip. It is twisted under there and cruel. For God's sake, harassing a dying woman? Really? Mm -hmm. And shameless about it, no less? Lucky for him, he saw that early on and hasn't spent years of his life with you. (laughs) You're right, just six months, so. (laughs) I'm genuinely confused why he hasn't made a clean break yet. Maybe he has and just can't be bothered to inform you. (gasps) (laughs) T. Wow. Someone goes, there was only one not the asshole I could see, but they're about to be downvoted into oblivion. <laughs> yeah, this is totally fair to break up. I I can't imagine. I would never, ever feel brazen enough to confront a, a sick woman. I know. I was just, when I when I, you read that, I was like, I forgot about that part. That's, that's ballsy right there. That is so ballsy. What is she supposed to do? Okay, you're right. I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, let me just not die. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, sorry yeah. for inconveniencing so, oh, you. Yeah, your six-month relationship. Sorry. <laughs> You're not engaged. No. You're not married. If you were married, yeah, it might be a little bit more of a group decision. Yeah. But he has no reason to ask you, Mm-mm. like, consult you. For permission or any sort of, like, yeah. No. This isn't a, a group decision. It's I'm making it right now. Absolutely. For my sister. Yeah. Yeah. Like my parents, they asked me if I would be my, my brother's guardian. He's 18 now, so I don't have to worry about all that. But I would still <laughs> be there if they need me to. <laughs> You're so nice. Yeah. <laughs> the best big sister. I know. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't I don't think there's any winning with this one. I think uh, this is a breakup. Yeah. Breakup. Divine intervention right there. Saved him. There you go. Saved his Holy ass. Holy Spirit, activate. That was Holy right. Spirit, <laughs> activate. Activate. Act. I should have put it on one of the sound pads. <laughs> That I can't figure out how to use. (laughs) Oh, well, next time, next time. (laughs) Next time. (laughs) Okay, moving along, moving along. One of this week's partners is Next Devo. We are all solidly footed in this new year, and with a new year can come a lot of new stresses. And if you're stressed and not getting quality sleep, I personally am not my best self, and I feel a lot of you can probably relate. That's where Next Evo Naturals can come in. Next Evo Naturals is the most clinically studied CBD brand, and their SmartZorb technology can help you get a better start to the year with products like their Stress CBD Complex. I personally have been dealing with a lot of burnout, so I put things off until last minute and then just exacerbate my stress even more. So when I'm feeling like that, I take one of the stress complex gummies and it just gets me in a better mood. I feel more zen. I can focus a little better. And I also don't have as much trouble sleeping, which makes the next day that much easier and better for myself. The stress CBD complex has both the smart Zorb CBD and patented whole plant ashwagandha, clinically proven to reduce stress by up to 70% and improve concentration by 50%. If you want to try it for yourself and 
make CBD a part of reaching your full potential with Next Evo Naturals, go to nextevo.com slash podcast and use promo code THT to get 20% off your first order of $40 or more. That's 20% off $40 or more at nextevo.com slash podcast with code THT. I have so many tabs open. I just wanted to like fuck us up today. Oh, I love that. So this one is from Off My Chest. It's an older one, you know, but still kind of a goodie. It's titled, My Boyfriend of One Year Left Me Because I Have Periods. Okay. Ugh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, when your girlfriend has periods. Oh, gross. My sister told me she saw a TikTok one time that was like, it was a man saying that, you know, like that women shouldn't have periods, that it's unnatural or something like that. I saw that. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, if I didn't have to have one, I wouldn't. <laughs> They're miserable. I wouldn't. I'm literally dying. It's not, Mine's not going to be here for another week and a half. And I feel like I have it already. Same. Our cycles must be synced. Yeah. Cycle sisters. Ah. <laughs> oh, it's just so brutal. And I'm dealing with like some, oh my God, no, no free feet pics. <laughs> I'm dealing with like some potential PCOS stuff. And yeah. it's just like, ugh, it's just an added layer. And Justin, like, he's so, so comforting like he brings me a little heat pad help me out whatever but um i just want to get one of those period simulators it's basically a tens unit you can yeah. buy them on amazon and i want to like simulate what it feels like on mm -hmm. him so he just understands me a little more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i just think it'd be so fun yeah i agree i've seen yeah when men do that i'm like i mean it feels like that but i see i don't act like that mm -hmm. i go to, i still go to work even though i have periods oh my god yeah it's just a rough world we live in. I know. Okay, so exactly what the title says. It's been a few weeks and I'm still so baffled and hurt. I don't know what to think. We had a future plan together. We were in the process of renting a place together too. He always seemed to be grossed out by women hygiene commercials, tampons, anything that had to do with periods and women's health. I didn't think much of it since he had been nothing but caring and loving and found it funny sometimes. I called him childish and I'd laugh about it. He would either change the topic or just said that it wasn't that funny. We've been staying in each other's houses a lot and never had sex since this one time we got all touchy. Then I stopped him when we were getting to it. He backed off and asked if everything was okay and if I'm uncomfortable. I said, no, it's just I'm on my period. Dead silence. He asked me, quote, for how long? <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? He then backed away further from me and sat silent, sometimes looking at his phone. I got sad and confused, so I laid down next to him, hoping for some cuddles, trying not to make it more awkward by saying something, so I was keeping silent. Nothing. Then he spoke. He said I should do something about it, and it completely ruined the mood for him. He told me he heard there's pills that make periods go away, and everyone uses them, so why can't you? <laughs> I told him that's not true and that the pills have major side effects, which I don't want to take because my periods aren't at all heavy and I rarely get cramps. After hearing about them being heavy, he became completely disgusted. He told me he didn't want anything to do with it and to fix my problems. I wasn't even angry. I was just hurt and shocked. It was my boyfriend, my beloved, saying stuff like that to me. I fell asleep crying and hurt that night. It sounded so stupid, yet so embarrassing and hurtful. After three days of absolutely no feelings, just a hug saying goodbye to him in the morning, he was supposed to leave. He sent a text saying he has been thinking about me. He told me he does so much for us. Why can't I just fix my periods so it doesn't have to be such a problem? I told him he was making it a problem and that he should be real and not childish. Mm -hmm. He completely disagreed and called me selfish. The next morning, he dumped me over a text. It's almost as if the love wasn't there. Mm. I've been crying a lot, having panic attacks. I was so sure he was the one. This sounds so stupid, I can't believe it. So yeah, I don't want advice. I'm over him. I just wanted to rant on how some people are completely ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Selfish for having a period? <laughs> Oh my God, the delusion. It's crazy. Especially when you think about how my vagina bleeds out of the same hole that they would like to put their pee pee in. Literally. It's not gross when that's there, but when I have a bodily function, I can't 
control. It's S- gross. Same canal, buddy. <laughs> it's the same hole. What's same, the big deal? No, like, it's just a normal thing. It's like, it's not like, I don't like the cum that comes out of you. It's all gloopy and gluey. I don't get to pick what comes out. I don't, that's not my business. <laughs> but you don't see me calling you selfish, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's crazy. It's so strange. This this post and people like this, it really has me convinced that there's a lot of men that like really don't like women. Yeah, just say that. Or just say you don't want to be with her anymore. Like I would rather someone... Do you think it's really the period thing? The fact that he gets grossed out by... That's true, that's true. And she's seen a history of it too. Yeah, and just like commercials. Like it's they're not showing... F- full tampons full of blood on no, it's tv like, it's like blue detergent or something but they're putting it on yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not and for him to be so mature and get grossed out by that yeah. like i have a boyfriend that doesn't care if i'm on my period or not he's just like oh whatever it's yeah. just it's natural are you okay no big yeah. deal <laughs> yeah who cares he's like if he like this is tmi for everyone here he doesn't he'll like we have sex when i'm on my period he does not give a flying fuck no because he gets to have sex <laughs> That's why. And because you're comfortable, <laughs> we're having sex. Who exactly. Cares? Exactly. Oh my God. I just had a flashback from high school. Wow. There was this girl that she liked to have sex in high school. Okay. I had sex with my boyfriend. <gasps> yeah. Boo. And I remember some story about a guy who was like, Yeah, I ate her out and she didn't tell me she was on her period and I kept getting globs in my mouth. <laughs> Everyone at home is puking right now. <laughs> what the heck? Straight people are wild, bro. <laughs> Why I, would you ever let someone do that to I you? I don't know. Maybe she, you know, and sometimes you don't know what's coming, like your period yeah. starting. So maybe she was just like, thought she was just like fired up down there, like to get going. I'm, just, but just, I'm excited, yeah. But it was, she was starting her period. Oh my God. It's so <laughs> It's bad. getting you all worked up. <laughs> so was like, there, yeah, there's a girl at my high school. I think she was like hooking up in the in the car like of the parking lot of the high school I went to. Why? Oh my god! Um, like go home and do it. But I, I think did. he was fingering her, and then he told my sister he was like it felt like more wet than usual, like than other. Oh, I don't know. I'm no. also like we're all like 17, so like what do you? <laughs> how many girls have you done that to? And he said he looked and it was all blood, and she oh, you know no. she started period. He was like, oh okay, yeah, I gotta go. And he was so embarrassed, and then but he was also like obviously disgusted because he's a 17 year old that's why like if they're like 17 then, yeah like, maybe i could see him being like i mean it's not okay just like my brother poor thing he's grown up even my dad they're it's like mainly women it's me my sister and my mom and then the two of them yeah both water sign men right oh, and then wow. me and my mom are fire signs and then drew's an earth or air sign i can't remember okay so i talk my period all the time my brother knows everything <laughs> about my period and then like the other day i was him, like do you know there's three holes down there he goes i don't need to know all that i'm like but you do you yeah, should know. You should. And one of them, every once a month, it bleeds. And I don't like it, but it's part of my body. <laughs> <laughs> You're so educational. Yeah. And then I my mom's this. like, you need to know this. Because it's true. Yeah. Because when they grow up to be stupid like that and say mean shit like that, just take a pill to stop it. No. Oh, my God. There's another story on here that I, um, I don't know if I've read it yet, but it was like, my boyfriend doesn't believe the clit is real. <laughs> and it's like this is the problem yeah this is why women have such hard times orgasming with yeah. men mm-hmm. like where's having, the proper sex education yeah or even having like a like a healthy relationship with a man like yeah but i mean i can't eat, i don't know what that's like and i don't want to know what that's like but i mean that's, why would i lie about that it's so weird. I think there's so many weird shit out there. Like, especially with dudes. I um I had a conversation with people once and I was like, having foreplay for 20 minutes increases the likelihood of an orgasm sure. for a woman by like 60% or mm-hmm. something like that. It's really high. I don't remember the exact stat right now. It's not but, like in the movies where they just start going at it. No, <laughs> no. And like the reality is a lot of women don't get off from penetration. Yeah. Like that's just the reality. So I said this to like a group of guys or around some guys and they were like, 20 minutes? <laughs> like they were flabbergasted. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, Jesus Christ. It's like, like when you like play a sport, you got to warm up. That's the warm up. Yeah. You got to do the warm up. It's the stretching. It's the stretching. You run a lap, right? Stretch. <laughs> <laughs> you get ready to go. God. Then you play the game. You don't just play. You get hurt. Then you'll get hurt or not have fun. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm just, I can't believe people like this exist. But they do. And fucking TikTok. I, have you seen the Matt Rife stuff on TikTok? Girl. <laughs> 
I have never liked him. He said some like weird like he's I've always, he's always given me misogynist vibes. Really? But he said something weird in a stand up set. Like I thought I saw a couple of his sets where I'm like, oh, that's funny. Like just clips on TikTok. Then I saw one. I wished for the life of me. I could remember what it was. Yeah. Then he was on that podcast and he said, you know, if I want I'm going to date a girl, I want her to have boobs. Then he's talking about like how vaginas look and he I'm like, was like vaginas are ugly i think yeah. they're gross and she has a big clit it looks like a like i'm he said i mean it was kind of funny but it's not he said i'm gonna do like a thumb war with it yeah like okay that's a little funny like i'll give you that <laughs> but it's mean and like what does your pp look like i want to see it mm-hmm I didn't realize um, he was like that. And mm -mm. I had only seen his stand-up stuff on TikTok. So yeah. Matt Reif, he's a comedian, for those of you that don't know. And so I thought, I was like, oh, he's cute. He's kind of funny. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I saw him on Stiff Socks podcast. And I was like, this man is disgusting. Well, And then the way that all three of them are like, oh, oh, that's the worst part. The locker that's, room My talk. sister always says that like the worst men aren't the ones that are like, you already know they're misogynist. You already know that they're like awful. Like that guy doesn't believe periods are real. He's gross. Like that. It's the people who don't say anything uh -huh. or who are secretive about it. Those are the ones you should worry about the most. So like if I was like, I would, I wish that one of them, especially one of them, I think his name is like Trevor or something. One of the hosts. Yeah. I've had them on the podcast. It was Trevor Wallace mm -hmm. and Michael something michael socks that's a stiff socks that's his last name is, socks. is it i don't know I'm just like, <laughs> i don't know it doesn't matter because that was so awful well and then um matt rife is like doubling down on it like commenting ha ha because some people are like girls are standing up for like saying like this is fucked up yeah and then someone writes you're just mad because he wouldn't even want you and then he comments ha 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 on it just maybe take the l dude like my sister said you're a knockoff pete davidson what do you want me to say to you I think that's so true, though, where it's like, it's not the ones that are saying the stuff you have to worry about. Yeah. Because you know where they stand. Yeah. It's the ones that laugh or go along with mm -hmm. it. Or don't say anything when something scary is happening. Oh. You know what I mean? That is so true. I've never thought about it that way, but it just proves that you don't have a safe space. No. Unless you know who these people are. Mm -hmm. I know. And I couldn't believe they clipped that, like, as, like, a promo. Like, isn't this hilarious? Oh my God, you guys are crazy. I'm surprised that uh, the PR team yeah. didn't like put a kibosh on They're that. Like, mm, maybe we don't. Yeah. Nope. They're like, that's funny. Post that one. That's the one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's it's kind of like the um the Tara girl that's on TikTok too. It's ah! like <laughs> it's so many people right now are just like saying the most outrageous stuff because any clickbait, any viral clip is better than like nothing. Her as a person in general, like she's going to say stuff that she wants attention for. Yeah. She's a pick me. Like there's no other way to describe it. No way to put it. I've seen so many lesbians like being like, what do you mean by this? Like all the shit she's saying. Think of like the I finna be in the pit. That was enough for me to be like, I don't like you. I didn't even like her before that. Did you see that? The Harry Styles yeah. thing. Yeah. Then she talked about how she spent 30 grand on Harry Styles concerts. Got scammed, didn't she? No. That's where that that's where I finna be in the pit is from when she got scammed. <laughs> no, she went through her like accounts or whatever for last year to total this year to show everyone how much she spent on concerts. Oh and she spent God. over 30 grand in a year. Jesus. And I'm like, what do you want people to say to that? Oh man, you're so funny. Like, of course, people are gonna be like, I wish I could have that money to pay rent. Thirty thousand dollars is life changing yeah. for just about everyone. 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 And she's like, hmm. Now I'm going to go make out with a girl in front of my boyfriend so he likes me. <laughs> okay. Jesus Christ. And what sucks too is that she's an OnlyFans creator, which I support sex workers. And I think yeah. I think that's super cool that they do that. Um, and I think it's uh, super feminist or whatever. But the way she does it isn't. And it's disappointing mm -hmm. and not fair to the people that actually do it in a way that isn't like that. I yeah, don't know. absolutely. Whew. Moving along from this one. <laughs> Shit. Another one of this week's partners is PDS debt. Debt is something that I have really struggled with. Coming from someone who didn't have a lot of financial literacy, it's been really hard to tackle on my own. This is where PDS Debt can come in and help you. PDS Debt has customized 0% interest options for anyone struggling with credit cards, personal loans, collections, or even medical bills. And we're all feeling the pinch right now. The cost of living is at an all-time high. Inflation, inflation, inflation is all we hear, which makes now a really good time to finally take some initiative in tackling your debt. So stop waiting and start saving with your own custom debt savings options from PDS Debt. 
PDS Debt is giving our qualified listeners a free debt savings analysis just for completing the 30-second online debt assessment at pdsdebt.com slash THT. You'll receive a full breakdown on how to save on interest each month and the quickest way to take care of your debt. So if you're making those monthly payments on time and no matter what you do, your debt doesn't seem to be going down, this could be for you. PDS Debt takes all of your payments and rolls it into one low 0% interest monthly payment. Everyone with over $10,000 or more in debt qualifies and there's no minimum credit score required. If you want to try it for yourself, PDS Debt is offering free debt analysis to our listeners just for completing the quick and easy debt assessment at www.pdsdebt.com slash THT. That's PDS D-E-B-T dot com slash T-H-T. Take back your financial freedom today by visiting pdsdebt.com slash T-H-T. Next one. Next one. Uh, this one has two parts. <laughs> it's a little wild. Do you have both the parts? I got both the Those parts. Those are my favorite posts. You're like, here's an update. It's, I think. I need the tea. Yeah, I'm not going to give too much away. It's the worst part about me. <laughs> I just love spoiling stuff mm-hmm. for everyone. Okay. So it's 13 days old and is titled... Am I the asshole if I tell my friend her boyfriend is planning to propose? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, that's the top vote on the post. My 27 female best friend has been dating her boyfriend, 26 male, for over five years. A while back, he reached out to me to help figure out ring size and the setup so he could make this the most magical day for her. Having known my friend for over 20 plus years, I know exactly how she wants her proposal to go and who she wants to be there. So I relayed all of this information to him months ago via text and over the phone. I even took the time to covertly find and confirm which ring she would love the most. A little background. My friend is incredibly family and friend oriented and in the past expressed to me on multiple occasions especially during holiday season, that in the five years they've been together, he hasn't really made much of an effort to indoctrinate himself into her family or friendships the way she has for his. While I do generally like him, I've always felt that he is incredibly self-serving and self-focused. Recently, through a mutual friend, I found out he started a group text between his, emphasis on his, friends, and his family to set up a time and date of the proposal. He has not only excluded myself, and according to the screenshots I've seen, he is doing everything verbatim I suggested he do, but he has completely excluded her family and other close friends from the event. He is planning on only having his boys and family present for the occasion, and knowing my friend, this would ultimately break her heart not being able to share this moment with her loved ones. I got heated and called him. At first, he was dodging my questions. Then, just outright said, quote, This is my proposal, and I've spent enough time and money to choose how I do it. Just be happy for your friend. It's not like you're not coming to the wedding. This infuriated me. And to make matters worse, I ran into her mom and dad at the grocery store and subtly asked if they knew of any possibility she was getting engaged. They were unaware, and I know for a fact My friend has told him that he needs to ask her parents for their blessing. She's somewhat traditional. My friend wears her heart on her sleeve, and I can predict how this event will go down when she sees all of his close friends and family there and none of hers. Considering her previous sentiments about his lack of interest in her family slash life, she will 100% see this as being hurtful and selfish, and I know she'll cry. To make matters worse, The location of the proposal is a whopping 30 minutes from her parents' house. I don't want to get involved in a fight or reveal the surprise, but on the other hand, I feel like I owe it to my lifelong friend to help her avoid being hurt and disappointed, maybe even helping her rethink what her future would look like with someone who just doesn't really appreciate what she values in life. So, am I the asshole if I tell my friend her boyfriend is going to propose? Hmm. At first I said yes, um, but that was before I knew the story. I also think people put a lot of pressure on proposals. So much. And it's kind of like the least important part of the whole thing. Literally. I think the wedding's more important than that. Absolutely. I mean, if she already knows that he doesn't try to make an effort to be close with her family and friends, even though he knows that's important to her, um, then I don't know that they should get married. Nope. Um, 
I don't think I would ruin it. I would just let him do it and then be like embarrassed that it didn't go the way that he wanted. That's what I would do. I I love that. <laughs> let him let him shoot himself in the yeah. foot. Yeah. How inconsiderate, mm-hmm. especially considering how much she's expressed over the years, how important family yeah. is. And I want you to ask my parents mm-hmm. for their blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also feel like proposals some people it depends on who you ask and what the dynamic of the couple is Mm -hmm. but a lot of times people will say like the proposal is really for the person that's being proposed to yes yes it's for both of you you're both going to get married Mm but it's for that person yeah it's their surprise Mm -hmm. so you should really do things that they would like not necessarily what you would like just because you're doing it yeah yeah how do you think that'll play out for you do you want to be the one that proposes so I've actually been engaged before (laughs) Oh my God, that's right. Yeah, I was engaged for a year. Um, Did you propose? We like plan. So like, that's what I was saying. Like I wanted to get married as soon as we graduated. And she was like, no. And I was like, okay, that hurt my feelings, but that's fine. And so (laughs) then um, I kept asking her, like, are we going to do it? Are you doing it? And I would make jokes like, okay, if you do it, like, because I did, I wanted her not to ask my family for permission because we're not like that. No. But she was really close to my parents, especially my mom. So I want her to like, tell my mom this is what she's doing involvement in some way especially i mean morgan we've known each other for a year you know how important my family is to me it's so everything. and she knew that too so anyways um she was like no, i'm not doing that and i was like okay yeah you're right that was so stupid um and then <laughs> no we ended up doing was in t- like i feel like the pandemic like flipped everyone on their head a little bit mm-hmm. um and so we just decided she was like okay yeah i'm ready to get engaged so we like we would go on dates like during the pandemic in our car like we would order food and just sit in my car yeah so we got engaged in my car we proposed to each other okay that's and cute picked each other's rings uh every time i told my i told this story my sister's like i wish that she cared about you enough to do it for you because she knew like i I love being surprised mm-hmm. well i love surprising other people and i want to be surprised but i always want to know what everyone's doing so i'm also like yeah we are the same literal <laughs> I'm like, same person a surprise party but like make sure it looks like this and then i'm wearing this on the day you do it and then also mm-hmm. what are we doing you want to know but like you don't really yeah. want to know <laughs> but you want to know yeah exactly so yeah um no so we did it in the car and then this is kind of tea we called my mom because i was living with my parents at the time so i called my parents and like we're all crying so we're excited then i call my sister she's crying and then we call her mom and her mom is like her i didn't get along with her family and her mom goes oh okay <laughs> so we heard her mom did and then we hung up and then she was crying because she was obviously upset and i said yeah. well you know my mom's excited who cares you know yeah but uh that should have been also an indicator to me that we shouldn't be together anymore but yeah i have been engaged before we didn't plan anything because it was so it was only a year that we were engaged yeah almost two but yeah it was a long time so wild it feels like a lifetime ago it doesn't even feel like me anymore like that was a version of me i don't know <laughs> well and i met you after but it's so funny because i remember your first couple episodes of two idiot girls which Mm -hmm. i i know i fell in love with and it was before i met drew and Mm -hmm. like was doing research before she came on and i mean just hearing the way she talked about you two as a Mm -hmm. couple it was like i realized like what love is and it was Mm -hmm. such a great role model to have dason and i'm just like it's ah, crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, and that's why people are like, I don't get it. Is she single? Because I wanted to take those episodes down. Yeah. And then I was like, no, because then it shows growth. It does. And you could see like, sometimes it looks like that to you. My sister and I always talk about 500 Days of Summer. And in that movie, like, uh, Drew always talks about how Chloe Grace Moretz, she tells Joseph Gordon-Levitt, she tells him like, really look at it. Like, was it what you think it was? Mm-hmm. And then he looks and he can see she was always annoyed with him. She didn't really like him like that. She was honest with him. And so I look at my relationship the same way. So having been engaged wow. and us getting engaged in a way that I didn't want to do, I just did because I wanted to be engaged Yeah, because I was in love and I thought that's what we were supposed to be doing. Um, I would want someone to surprise me. And then she was always like so embarrassed. So she would be like, I would never do that in front of your family. I'm like, no, that makes sense because you're not like that. And then I was thinking, shouldn't I be with someone who would do something like that because it's for me, not for her? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I think you said it so, so well where it's like, yeah, you want someone that wants to surprise you. And it's sad because it is cute to mm-hmm. propose to each other. Like if, but that if, if that's what you want, yeah, which is not really what you wanted. Mm-hmm. So it's like, ah, uh, it's, it's really tough. Justin, I'm really scared, to be honest. <laughs> really scared. He says he has a plan. Ask when. No idea. <laughs> I fucking hate surprises. I like to know when they're going to be. Yeah. 
I mean, I Google the ends of movies. Yeah, that's true. She I can't. S- she won't watch new shows because she wants to know what's going to happen. I, I Google it. Yeah, I Google the ending of every single show. Mm-hmm. I haven't done it with Outer Banks season three yet. <laughs> Give me some credit. I have to watch a season two, but and then I'll watch season three. Yeah, it's pretty good. But um, but angering. It Everyone in that show's so hot. It's so that's why I'm gonna watch it. Chase Stokes, and now he's dating Kelsey Ballerini. I know T. But Even Madeline, Madeline Klein. Klein. Oh. oh, everyone. Mad. Is her name Madison Bailey? That's her name, right? Oh, she's such a cutie too. I, the actor that plays po- everyone in the show is so hot. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, you, you got it. But oh my god, he says he has a plan, and he's told other people this plan. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, is it outside? Is it nature? Because mm-hmm. like all I literally want when I think about like my dream proposal. Justin, I know, take you, notes, take I know notes. you hear this audio. <laughs> I literally saw a picture where it was like on a cliff edge, like overlooking water, beautiful mm. greenery, trees, tea light candles everywhere. That's it. I just nature with a photographer in the bush. Yeah. And like a party with friends and family after. Yeah. That's what I want. That's your engagement party right after. Yeah, yeah. right after. Like, ah, like in Iceland. A dude, I have been twice. Like I've never been. Months. I know. I live vicariously through the both of you. I'm like, wow. I can't believe we went to Iceland twice. That's how I feel. I didn't go, but we want to go in August. <gasps> Do you want to come? Yes. We're gonna go uh, throw puffins off the cliffs. Throw them? Yeah. They Why? get they get lost. The little babies they uh-huh. get lost in the town, and you have to like scoop them out with nets so they don't drown and all this crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And then in the morning you go to the cliffs and you throw them off. Throw them off. Yeah. It helps them. Okay. It'll be good. <laughs> They're all, don't throw them like that. I'm like, oh, I'm throwing it. <laughs> um, okay, so top comment on this one. Do not tell her, all caps. As much as you know her and want this proposal to go as planned, it is ultimately up to her boyfriend how he wants to do it. If your friend is disappointed, then that can be her sign to discuss with her fiance about moving forward. It is not your place to tell her or intervene at this point. Mm-hmm. OP replies, huge red box lots of awards um and basically says since this is the top comment so far i'm hoping my response here will be seen by the masses fellow redditors let me make this super super clear you've convinced me tenfold not to say anything to her and to let things play out as they should i've done the extent of what i can by trying to reach out to him and he decided not to listen to me that's on him it's not my place to initiate a fight slash problem and possibly ruin things before they even happen Trust me when I say I am not going through with it. I see now that this is 1000% not my place, regardless of my loyalty and relationship with my friend. And I would be making things far worse by interjecting myself where I have no right to be. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of other stuff that they write, but um, we're going to get to the update. It's fine. It's just just talking about I thought that was the update. I was so excited. Okay. No. Oh, no. There's more. We get the resolution. (gasps) Okay. So update to everyone who told me to keep my mouth shut. Thank you. So on Saturday, the day of the proposal, I got a call from her boyfriend. He was screaming at me, blaming me for not showing up, uninvited still, to the proposal with her parents because she was upset they weren't there. What? I was (laughs) fucking slack jawed. I told him I knew this would happen. And he says, verbatim, quote, you just admitted you knew this would happen. So if you knew the whole time and you actually cared for her, you would have invited them. I was gobsmacked and hung up on him. Not even an hour later, I get a call from her asking me to come to her parents. According to her, this is how the situation played out. He popped the question. She said yes. And the people he invited popped out from hiding. She was bombarded by four of his guy friends, his mom, dad, older brother, and his sister-in-law. His parents were holding a sign that said, quote, welcome to the family, Mrs. Insert his last name here. And this is where things go downhill. I did not know this before, and I thought I knew everything, but my friend doesn't want to change her last name. (coughs) And she's told him that repeatedly since they'd gotten together. She is an only child from a Ukrainian family. Oh, I love that. And with everything going on with Ukraine in the last year, she's doubled down. Yeah. I literally just got full body chills. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, when she saw the sign, she joked, Mrs. His last name. I think you mean Mrs. Her last name. Mm-hmm. Everyone went silent until his mom said, quote, well, the ring is already engraved. No, what? No changing it now. She takes the ring off and sees Mrs. His Last Name engraved on the band. 
Then she asked if her parents were coming. He gave every excuse. He didn't have their number. There were too many people there. He wanted to keep it private and eventually said, quote, this was my proposal to you. And now my family is your family. We can just send your parents the pictures later. (laughs) She took the ring off and left. Good. That's when I'm assuming I got the call from him. Mm -hmm. She went straight to her parents. She asked them about the engagement. They were clueless. She then asked if I knew anything. I asked if she was in the right place. She said she was. So I told her I would answer any questions she had rather than dumping everything on her. Mm -hmm. She was upset but thanked me. She was furious when I told her about the call with him earlier and said, does he really think I'm that shallow? She said it wasn't about having a perfect proposal for her or her parents there. It was about him making the whole thing about himself, Mm -hmm. as always, and she was done feeling ignored and belittled. So this was her breaking point. She's staying with her parents currently and has been receiving texts from him. The worst one so far is him telling her she has to pay him back for the (laughs) ring and for ruining his life. (laughs) No. (laughs) Mm -mm. Right now, all I can do is be here for her and whatever decision she makes. I will fully support because as you've all helped me realize, this isn't about me. It's about her. Not my monkey. Not my circus. Yeah. Edit, she gave him the ring back when she took it off. I didn't include that because I was at the 3,000 character limit already. Edit two, update. I did not mention this plan when I originally posted, just in case her ex found this thread, but I can report now that we got a heads up last night that he wasn't at their apartment, so we ran over and got most of her shit out, at least all of the really important stuff. To those asking, no, she isn't going back to him. It's over. Yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Woo. Woo. I love a happy ending. That was a good one. I liked that one. That's so manipulative to put the name on the band. Ew. You know what I mean? Tacky. Like he's like, well, I can't take it off. And then she's going to be like, okay. You know she wanted to keep yeah. her last name. You absolutely it's manipulative. know. It's so manipulative. And the fact that the mom knew about it mm-hmm. and was like, well, it's too late now. It's engraved mm-hmm. in the band. It's not too late. No. We even signed a marriage license. No. It's just, I didn't, didn't you say, care if it just says Mrs. and there's a strike through. Yeah. <laughs> the last name. I don't want that name on me. That's not my Hell name. Hell no. And like, even if you get married, your last name doesn't automatically change. No, you don't have to. I'm not going to change my last name. I've been thinking about it lately. Yeah. Because my brother, he's the only one that'll carry on my dad's last name. Yeah. And so... I don't know. I my I don't know about my sister, but I'm for me. I'm not going to change my last name. I love it. your last name. It is so beautiful and unique, and I I love it. I keep seeing a lot of videos too, especially. Um, there's this one lesbian creator, and she's like, "You straights, like you got to pick the coolest name. Yeah, like pick the cooler name or like create your own." I love that when people create their own legacy like yeah. together. I think that's super cute. I so. know. It's so cool. I was talking to Justin about it recently and I was like, what do you think about hyphenating ours? So it's Absher Thunstrom and like you take Absher too. And he's like, yeah, that's really cool. That's a powerful name right there. Yeah. I mean, Thunstrom alone, that's that's crazy. But Absher Thunstrom, <sighs> 10 out of 10. Ooh. <laughs> it's so funny. Every time we chuck it into like a hotel under his name, they, I think they like read it or like see it mm-hmm. and they're like, Thunderstorm? <laughs> he's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's me. <laughs> but uh, oh, top comment on this update is, I don't know what happened before, but I really hope this poor girl sees those glaring red flags and end things with him, mm. which she did. I know. Well, and it sounds like she looked back and was like, he used to do this. Think of all the, that's what, like with the period story, think of all the shit she puts up with her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. He probably doesn't shower or wash his butt good. Nope anything and she still is with him but then she has a bodily function she can't control and then she's disgusting so it's the same here like i'm sure she put up with a bunch of shit and she goes and you're not even gonna respect the way that i want to be proposed to slash my family to be involved like we're done it's so weird i think that's a little bit of ring clarity too Mm. where we stay in these relationships and we think this is amazing. Yeah, every every relationship has some issues. It's it's fine. Yeah. It'll, it'll get better, especially, you know, if we move in together mm. or if, if we get married. If we get a dog or whatever, yeah. Yeah, and we see, you know, a lot of times with ring clarity, especially thanks to TikTok, mm. you get engaged and all of a sudden you're like, wait, 
is this what I really want? I had never heard of Ring Clarity until I started listening to Hot Takes. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, was I having Ring Clarity? I think you were. Back then. I think you were. <laughs> Only time told me that, yes, I was. <laughs> shit comes out. Mm-hmm. Shit comes out. When that ring goes on the finger, shit comes out and it yeah. gets real. And I saw like a bunch of stuff on TikTok where this girl got proposed to. And then like three of his girlfriends saw it and came out of the woodwork. <gasps> So it's like that ring goes on the finger and like shit goes down. Yeah. If, if there's anything to be found out, it will come out. Same with like, I mean, all the Adam Levine shit that happened last year. Oh my God. Or do you watch Love is Blind? I have seen the first couple seasons and I saw like clips of the uh, Raven. Yeah. Raven and like. Yeah, she was on Vile Files. And yeah. She talked about it. Yeah. Just goofy. Mm. I just, oh, especially like when you're such a public facing figure. You're, how do you feel like you're going to get away with cheating? I don't know. How dumb are you? You're going on one of the most famous shows on Netflix. How dumb are you? <laughs> I don't know. It's a man. It's a man. <laughs> they have the audacity. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Well, happy ending with this one. Yes. I love this for her. Sounds like she's got a good friend. Mm-hmm. I'm glad she didn't tell her. I know that way. Let her come to, I feel like if they come to the conclusion, they're more likely to stick with their decision than just listening to other people. Yeah. yeah. I also thought about the fact too, if she would have told her friend mm-hmm. or like would have intervened and got the parents there, even though she wasn't invited and the parents weren't invited, if she would have like gone against that boyfriend, how much could that have, changed the outcome sure if the parents were there Mm -hmm. would she have taken that as a sign oh he cared Mm -hmm. even though it had nothing to do with him Mm -hmm. and would she have gotten married yeah well and then the last name she probably would have been like ah it's fine because at least he brought my parents you know what i mean (laughs) i'll I'll compromise on that because my family's here Mm -hmm. that's some divine intervention (laughs) holy spirit activated yeah there you go (laughs) it activated another one of this week's partners is zocdoc You know, I just turned 29 last weekend, and I don't know if getting older means more health stuff, but I feel like getting my health under control has been such a struggle. From dealing with hypothyroidism to what now might actually be PCOS, it's been really hard getting a solid answer about what the heck is going on with me. But ZocDoc has been my hero in helping me find quality doctors and taking that burden and that stress off my plate. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. And my absolute favorite part, I love reading the reviews. I love creeping and seeing how these doctors treat their patients, what their bedside manner really looks like, because who wants to waste time going to a doctor who's not going to believe them or take what they're experiencing seriously? So no more doctor roulette or scouring the internet for questionable reviews that aren't verified. With ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favorite doctor that you just haven't met yet. If you want to try it for yourself, go to ZocDoc.com THT and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash THT. ZocDoc.com slash THT. Okay, this next one is about food. And I saw this story and it reminded me of a Two Idiot Girls episode where you and Drew were talking about like your like weird foods. Weird foods you like to eat. And one was like ketchup on rice. Rice. I don't like that, but Drew does. What kind of rice? Like white rice? Like regular white rice? Regular ketchup or no sugar? Like what are we working with? Heinz? Mm, Yeah. The, the regular one. What does it taste like? It tastes nasty. I think ketchup's gross. <laughs> like, I'll eat it in hamburgers, <laughs> but I won't enjoy it. But, like, I'm not going to... When people dip stuff in it, well, you're gross. But I like ranch. But I love ranch. I think ketchup's gross. But, yeah. They just, but you're, are you vegan? Yeah. You're vegan? Yeah. So, what's um what's a good dairy-free ranch for you? Ooh, um... Uh, Follow your heart. That's a good one. Because I've been, we're dairy free these days. Ooh, okay. Borderline going towards vegetarian because meat grosses me out. Yeah, me too. That's why I stopped eating it. I just, <laughs> it's, it's, if I don't have to cook it, I like it, mm-hmm. but it's gross. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. I'll, send, I'll text it. you the, a picture of it. It's the best dairy free ranch. Because some of them will be like, oh, yeah, it's made with coconut milk, but you can't taste it. Yes, you can. You can always taste coconut. I'm not drinking that or eating that. Yeah. But the Follow Your Heart one tastes like regular ranch. Okay. And the Target has an off brand one. I'll send it to you. Okay. It was really good. Yeah. What's your weird food that you have? 
Um, I don't think I had any when I was telling Drew. What? I mean, I like to eat pickles. That's not that weird. That's very normal. Yeah. Olives out of the can. Again, normal. Yeah. I don't have any. I couldn't think of any. No weird like food combos? No. I mean, we also talked about how, like Drew hates peanut butter and jelly. Oh. But I love peanut butter and jelly. Can't yeah. get enough of it. Toast the bread too. And oh, strawberry. you have to toast the bread. Yeah. But strawberry jelly is the best jelly. Mm, okay. I like where this is headed. <laughs> So this one is titled, Am I the Asshole for Refusing to Punish My Son for Calling His Classmates Food Weird? I, female 32, caught a private text this morning from the mother of my son's, male 7, classmate. She told me that apparently my son has been calling her daughter's traditional lunch weird and things as such, and apparently that is making her daughter feel uncomfortable and insecure. She asked me to please talk to my son about being more sensitive and respectful so her daughter doesn't feel excluded. Now, I feel for this woman as a fellow mother. No one wants to see their child feeling sad, but overcoming insecurities is a big part of growing up. Additionally, I thought it was ridiculous of her to criticize my son, a seven-year-old, for making relatively innocuous and curious comments about food that is not familiar to him. He is at a curious age and is discovering the world, and I refuse to try and limit him and shut him down for not having the emotional sensitivity of an adult. (laughs) Politely, I told that mother that I was sorry for her daughter struggling with insecurities, and I found some online parenting articles (gasps) about building your child's confidence (laughs) to send to her so she could use some tips to help her daughter out. She replied and said I was acting completely shamelessly and disgracefully and I am not able to text her anymore. <clears throat> am I the asshole? Was it like uh, like cultural food? Her daughter's think? traditional lunch. Oh, okay. So it's like PB&J and stuff, right? I think this is cultural food. Yeah. I'm going to take that as like, it could be like, if they're an Indian family, it's like a curry or mm-hmm. something like that. Um, I'm I'm envisioning it's some mm. sort of. I, I mean, that would make sense. He's not going to make fun of PB and J, yeah, yeah, or pizza. No, because that's this little white boy's probably seen yeah. that. <laughs> He's eating that, yeah. Uh, yeah, you are the asshole. I mean, saying no is one thing. Like, no, that's your own problem. That's an issue in and of itself. But uh, to send the articles, dude, it's like over the top. That's fucked up. That's insane. Mm. Also, like, it's kind of ironic that she's saying things like, he's curious. He's at a curious age and is discovering the world. (laughs) Clearly not if he's being a bully. Being a bully (laughs) about someone's food. I mean, yeah. It's weird. And it's not even, um, I mean, her being insecure. It's because he's disrespecting her and her family's culture. Yeah. So, like, yeah, you should tell your kid, don't fucking do that at school. It's really weird. And Mm -hmm. honestly, I've seen a lot of stories from people coming out and they're like yeah I was Indian and I had traditional food and my dad made me a lunch every day and I was so embarrassed Mm -hmm. I threw it away Mm -hmm. and got school lunch instead because I was made fun of Mm -hmm. and that scarred them like stuff like that sticks with you when you're a kid yeah it really does does. and it makes you embarrassed of your culture which is super shitty because when you grow up in it like yeah you want to be proud of it but like no one else is so you feel embarrassed did you deal with that at all um no i mean i've eaten like i've eaten my fair share of salmon food but we never would take it for lunch or anything like that i wonder if my dad did though because my dad grew up was like born here but grew up in Samoa and then grew up like end up coming back Mm -hmm. but um no, I mean, well, I did in a sense, not about food. It would be like, oh, well, like, because I grew up in a predominantly like Latino area. Mm-hmm. Um, like my godfather is Mexican. So I grew up around Spanish a lot. All my best friends were Mexican and stuff. Um, so people would ask me like, oh, are you Mexican? Or they would speak Spanish to me and I'd be like, I don't know what you're saying. Um, and so that always kind of bothered me because there was no one that looked like me and Drew or my mom or my dad. And so it wasn't until that's why we love The Rock so much. Yeah. He was like our one. Like we had a couple. And what's funny is that, like that type of like wrestling that that's so important to our culture. And I <laughs> yeah. don't know why. I think it's so silly. But like all my cousins, my dad, like they all loved watching it. I didn't. But um, I could see why, I guess. So we had other like Samoan wrestlers that were like a big deal. Like Rikishi, he was one. And his big move is he would put his butt in your face which is like <laughs> very someone very silly like you're like of course you're doing that because it's funny but it wasn't until the rock like became the rock and then 
you know, got out of wrestling that I was like, oh my gosh. It's like, so then I'd be like, oh, I'm Samoan. And they'd be like, what's that? I'm like, oh, well, it's like Hawaiian. That's what I used to always say. Mm -hmm. And one time my dad heard me say, like, don't ever say that again. You're not Hawaiian. Like, we're Samoan. There's nothing wrong with being Hawaiian, but he's like, but don't lie. Like, it's the pride. It's not the same thing. Yeah. It's like be prideful. Exactly. So then when The Rock is out, I was like, oh, like, you guys, you guys know The Rock. They're like, yeah, I'm like, he's my uncle. He's not my uncle. Everyone says that. (laughs) People are telling me, my sister, we tell everyone you're my cousins because there's no Samoan girls in media. You know what I mean? Oh, Oh, I don't care. I'll tell people you're my cousin. Like, that's funny. Yeah. But same with like Moana, like stuff like that. It means a lot. So, but I never took food to school like that or anything like that. Like, my mom was like, PB and J, <laughs> get home. It's easy. Get yeah, out of here. Go to school. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's what's so cool about TikTok is I, I watch like thousands of videos of people making like traditional Korean dishes mm-hmm. or Japanese dishes and then um, seeing like, like white moms make their kids like Korean food to take to school and then I see like Asian creators like stitching it and saying like that's so cool because I wish that I could have eaten my lunch in peace and not been like what's that smell or whatever you know what I mean oh yeah I can't even imagine but yeah it's wild I um I didn't really Minnesota we're very bland there there's (laughs) you know great Mexican food Mm -hmm. there's good Thai food sushi but like I didn't really encounter like a lot of Filipino food and um, coming to grad school, I just loved everyone brought these amazing dishes. Mm -hmm. And like, I honestly don't know if I had seen like tamales Mm -hmm. before and like empanadas, Mm -hmm. like really good empanadas. (laughs) Oh, but like seeing that in grad school, I just like, I appreciate it so much. I'm like, this is amazing. Yeah. But I, it's just, it's so weird to me that like this mom wouldn't want to instill in her son and be like, there's a bunch of different cultures. Mm-hmm. There's so many different foods. Mm-hmm. And hey, no, that's not weird. Let's let's go out to a restaurant so you can try some sure. yourself. Yeah. Like as a parent, you want to create such an inclusive, worldly mm-hmm. experience for your kid. Or yeah. at least I would. Like <laughs> I want my kid to be able to go out in the world and survive and thrive mm-hmm. anywhere and everywhere. Amongst all different types of people. Yeah. And be inclusive and mm-hmm. open-minded and kind. Like hearing your son's being an asshole and you're like here let me send your daughter some self-help articles tell her to toughen up yeah (laughs) what the heck that's That's weird it's crazy it's giving karen (laughs) yeah it's giving karen i would send that lady back articles on how to raise a kid that's not an asshole yes thank you for the tip here's some for you (laughs) yeah raising a future bully yeah oh top comment on this one you're the asshole (laughs) teaching your kid to be respectful of Mm -hmm. others choices is not shutting him down it's literally part of your job as a parent to you know parent and it's not like he's asking like what's that like what are you eating or like he's like curious about what she's eating yeah he's just being a dick he's being a bully yeah he's just being a bully Mm -hmm. and like calling someone's lunch weird and saying things as such that's not a curious comment Mm -mm. like the mom is brushing it off calling something weird he's being a little bully yeah he's being rude i'm sure he would be meaner if he wasn't seven because he just doesn't know those big words yet (laughs) but when he does because you're not teaching him not to be mean he's gonna use him (laughs) exactly someone goes entitled child in the making (laughs) which most likely will lead to an entitled adult a lot of comments a lot of comments people just pissed at op yeah rightfully so vote on this one is asshole there's Agreed. no comments from OP though. <laughs> She's like, uh, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. People don't don't like to hear that they're wrong. Yeah. Uh, but it's posted four days ago. So maybe there will be a little update Ooh. realizing, hey, yeah, I suck. <laughs> I uh, I realized I was wrong. Yeah. But uh over this one. Up next, am I the asshole for kicking a girl out of my party for calling her boyfriend daddy? Okay. <laughs> was it Pedro? Ah, <laughs> oh, girl. <laughs> I don't want to talk about him. I'll go on for way too long. It was Travis Kelsey. Yes, I'm gay. I know. It doesn't make any sense. But I stopped having a crush on Travis Kelsey and now it's strictly just Pedro Pascal. I can't get enough. You don't have to put yourself in a box. No, I know, but I know because everyone's like, oh, read the lesbian master doc. Um What's have that? you ever read that? <laughs> Look it up. It's pretty good. <laughs> but basically it talks about um compulsory heteronormativity. Oh. Which like my sister was like, the biggest indicator that you are, were gay when we were little and I should have noticed that is I had a hundred crushes. Every boy I met, I had a crush on. 
but I would never want to talk to them or sit near them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And my sister was repulsed by every man that's ever been around her. Whereas me, I'm like, okay, new crush, you're it. You know what I mean? But I would never talk to them or anything like that because we weren't allowed to date growing up, yeah. which made it way more confusing when I did realize I liked girls. So that's why it's just page But then in the article, it talks about how we're, we're brought up to be heteronormative, right? So it's yeah. just like, you can't help it. That's just how my brain operates. And they were saying like, if all your crushes are men, that are like famous or you don't know and you know you'd never run into then you're probably a lesbian and i'm like oh t but then the the more stuff drew gets to do i'm like if i ever meet pedro pascal i'll literally die like oh my god i hope it happens i just love him so much like as a person and he's very good looking but he's he's, so cute i know that's what i'm like is he the same age as my mom yeah but i know i could i know i can make it happen but then what i i don't know i like to make up a lot of things so we'll see a good oh, looking guy. But yeah. I just love that he watches the thirst traps made about himself. <laughs> His favorite's Pedro Pascal fan account. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he loves it. And then like, there's an interview I saw with him recently where the interviewer was like, hi, daddy. Yeah. And he's like, hi, mommy. And I'm like, <laughs> he's like, I'm your cool slutty daddy. I'm all, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you're bringing all this up because it makes me realize that I picked really good stories for you for your father knows something. Ooh, okay. Yeah, so if you're interested in hearing some write-ins related to LGBTQ plus issues, head over there because Dason is going to be on the couch with my dad as well. Woo-hoo. It's going to be so good. <laughs> uh, okay, so this one, let's see what this is about. Kicking a girl out for calling her boyfriend dad. Her own boyfriend, right? Not her. Yeah. Okay. I, female 24, was hosting a small-scale hangout with about 15 of my friends. One girl, female 23, is an acquaintance of mine, and she came with her boyfriend. We were all sitting around in the main room and eating pizza when she came to sit and sat on her boyfriend's lap. A little weird since there were open seats, but I didn't say anything. (laughs) While we were talking as a group, she would always refer to her boyfriend as daddy. She would interject with things like, quote, Daddy just bought me a new stand mixer. And daddy looks so handsome in this shirt, right? (laughs) I told him to get it. (laughs) At first, we thought she was joking or messing with us, but she continued doing it. And the rest of us were side-eyeing each other and were kind of uncomfortable. I asked her if she could save the pet names for home because some of us were feeling uncomfortable. She got upset and told me to stop making such a big deal over a nickname and slut-shaming her. I told her that wasn't my intention at all but I would appreciate if she could stop because it was killing the vibe. (laughs) She started ranting at me about a whole lot of stuff, and I just told her and her boyfriend to please leave. Her boyfriend was pissed too, but they eventually got out. The rest of the evening was less uncomfortable and way more peaceful. A few of my friends who didn't know the girl I kicked out thanked me for making her leave, but we all felt kind of awkward because of what happened. Am I the asshole? Mm, No. (laughs) If they're being weird and you don't really know her, you'd be like, okay, like, especially if she's not matching the vibe. Yeah. Well, and if she's arguing with her, then I'd be like, okay, you gotta go, dude. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. Does it sound to you like they're, the couple is trying to involve others in, like, their kink? (gasps) Which is making people uncomfortable? Yeah. Or just, like, daddy, daddy. Like, I feel like it's kind of a thing where people call their significant other, like, daddy. That's a kink? I don't know. To call people daddy? Maybe. Oh, is it a kink? (laughs) I don't know. Well, and it's your house. So if you don't like how someone's acting, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And she wasn't slut shaming her. She was just like, well, did she do it in front of everyone? I would have pulled her. Yeah. Oh, I would have pulled her to the side. That's kind of mean. Yeah. Daddy kink is a sexual fetish. Ooh. Calling your partner daddy in bed can be an erotic way to explore power play. Ooh. Okay. Try it out, Morgan, and let me know if it works. Give me the... (laughs) Give me the tea. I literally would rather do so many other things. The real tea with that is that I call my dad, daddy. I call my parents, mommy and daddy, mama, daddy. I used to yeah. until the internet ruined it for me. I know. Now when I do it, it's not in front of people because people are weird about my dad. He's a handsome man. I get it. But Do you have like a lot of people thirsting after your dad? Oh yeah, it's bad. What? We don't even tag him in anything anymore. Was Everyone he getting a lot of followers? Lost privileges. Yeah. We made my parents make their profiles private. What? <laughs> We're like private profiles for everyone. People are so goofy. I know. Especially, I think is it was when Drew posted for my dad for Father's Day last year. And then everyone was like, oh my God. Same with my brother. I'm like, you guys need, it? that's enough. Wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Wrap it up. Oh my God. That's mm. hilarious. They don't do that on mine. I think I have more queer people that follow me. But mm. I think on Drew's, like, 
as well as street girls that are like, oh my God. Oh, I didn't know your dad looked like that or whatever, you know? Wow. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd put them private too. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> Make your account private. <laughs> this one's weird. I'm like, oh, if it's like a part of their little fetish, whatever they got going on. Yeah. If it was every word out of her mouth, like, hey, daddy, can you grab me another uh, LaCroix? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, daddy. While you're in there. <laughs> daddy, how's your pizza? Yeah. Daddy, like, okay, mm-hmm. enough, enough. Yeah. Especially after you ask. Yeah. I would never do it in front of people, though. I would have been like, hey, can I talk to you really fast? And be like, and I would have made it like, because I'm passive aggressive. I would have been like, yeah, the vibe's a little weird. So like, mm-hmm. if you guys could like tone down the PDA, I would call it that or yeah. something. So no, I don't want to embarrass her, but I guess they didn't care. And they just said, hey, can you stop saying that? That would make me want to say it more if someone told me that. I know. I like, <laughs> I kind of think I have like an oppositional tendency where mm-hmm. you really have to Jedi mind trick me. Yeah. Like my parents, especially, you have to Jedi mind trick me. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I'm like, mm, you said not to chew gum. I'm, I'm going to chew, chew gum. all the gum. Yeah. yeah I'm just like, <laughs> I'm annoyingly oppositional sometimes sure. with like decisions, yeah. not. Not like opinions and stuff, but mm-hmm. it's weird. But yeah, I just I think I would too. I'd like want to be like, oh, you mean like this, Daddy? Yeah, like <laughs> just whatever. Does that bother you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the top comment goes slut shaming. She told on herself right there. She feels insecure about her sexuality, which is why she feels the need to parade it around at a party in hopes the people will validate her. As soon as everyone rightfully got uncomfortable, her worst insecurities were confirmed and she had a meltdown. People keep confusing tolerance for alternative sexualities with, yeah, I'm totally fine witnessing them with my own two eyes in a public setting. Telling someone, I don't want to see or hear about your sex life is not the same as telling them you should be ashamed of your sex life. Okay. And it's obvious that there's a kinky component to her calling him daddy. Yeah. Not the asshole. That's good. I never thought of it like that. That's true. I mean, it's a pick me because she wants validation from other people. Yeah. Pro- most, probably more specifically men um, when she's acting like that, I would think. Yeah. But it worked yeah. out. She's she left. Like, Do you like his shirt? It reminds me of in Mean Girls where she's like, tell him his hair looks sexy. Push back. You know, just, <laughs> <laughs> That's what that sounds like. Oh, my God. And that was her is. being like vindictive and weird in front of everyone. So not that she's being vindictive, but yeah. I'm saying in the movie, she, Regina George was. But. Oh, my God. Yeah. I and so it was for attention it. and for people to validate their relationship and stuff like that. I so see it. Okay. Well, worked out for this friend group. Yeah. And don't invite her to any more parties. <laughs> You're bringing down the vibe. That's what I'm going to say at your birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this at my birthday party. <laughs> hey, daddy. <Yeah. laughs> daddy. Oh, God. No, I, I, I don't have any pet names. Like Mm-mm. for Justin. I say like boo or babe or yeah. like the regular. Yeah. But I watch Ginny and... Georgia, Georgia okay. and Ginny, whatever that one is. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought like Pooh was really cute. Like Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, that's cute. Like, Pooh, but no, I got to I gotta come up with a nickname for him. You just got one. Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> Just When Justin's daddy. Not until we have kids. <laughs> <laughs> and that's acceptable to say. Yeah. <laughs> oh, go tell your dad. Go tell yeah, daddy. Yeah, that's what my mom would be like. Oh, that's your dad. Until then, not a chance. <laughs> okay, moving along. Another one of this week's partners is Lomi. I don't know about you guys, but I have tried composting in the past. It was intense. I had worms to help speed up the process. I mean, I went full into it and it was a lot to maintain, which is why I love Lomi. Lomi allows me to turn all of my food scraps and kitchen waste that I normally chuck in the garbage disposal or bin and turn it into dirt with the push of a button. And depending on what Lomi you get, you can actually watch the process happen. Lomi is a countertop electric composter that turns scraps into dirt in under four hours. There's no smell when it runs, and it's actually pretty quiet. I really wanted to make 2023 my year of being more sustainable and helping the earth, which is why I love this device. I take all the dirt that Lomi makes from my scraps, and I put it in my plants, which helps them grow bigger and healthier. Justin and I are also going to be doing raised garden beds. Ever since seeing a TED Talk on food waste, it has been something that's haunted me for years. And I feel like with Lomi, I'm actually contributing to a better cycle, and using this dirt to 
help create my next food source. If you want to start making a positive environmental impact or just clean up after dinner that much easier, Lomi is perfect for you. Head to Lomi.com slash THT and use promo code THT to get $50 off your Lomi. That's $50 off when you head to Lomi.com slash THT and use promo code THT at checkout. Food waste is gross, so let Lomi save you a cold trip out to the garbage can. Okay, so this one is from Off My Chest. It is titled, My Boyfriend Likes to Block Me. I'm 22 female, and he's 27 male. He told me once that he likes to block me in weeks. One week for the first time, I'm dramatic. Two weeks for the second time. Three weeks, etc. It got up to two months with no contact. What kind of behavior is this? He prefers to not talk and then go back to normal with enough time. He doesn't talk it out unless I bring up the issue again. That's all they wrote. So he does that when he's mad at her? Yeah. So the first time I get mad at you, I'd block you for one week. The second time you piss me off, I'm going to block you for two weeks. That's toxic. I don't know if I've ever heard of a more unhinged yeah. conflict resolution tactic. He's also 27 and she's 22, which is kind of a red flag. But um, yeah, yeah a little bit, especially you know? depending on when they met. Yeah, girl. Yeah, if you really think about that. Um, yeah, that's toxic. That's and like obviously manipulative and like yeah, he, there's probably a little bit of gaslighting in there too. Like, well, you did it. What did you expect me to do? Yeah. You know? Also, if someone blocked you and didn't talk to you for two months, we're not together anymore. When you just think you broke up? <laughs> yeah, I would. I don't have a boyfriend anymore. I don't have a boyfriend. <laughs> Hell no! I'm getting my ass back on Hinge. Yeah. I'm gonna have a good time. He's Get like, some what free are you dinners. doing? We're still together. No. What do you mean? You didn't talk to me for two months. Yeah. Well, and then do they not hang out for two months? Too? Yeah. Nothing. That's weird. Mm-mm. Nothing. I don't like that. He's probably got a whole other girlfriend. And yeah. He, he, he He's rotates. He rotates the block schedule. Yeah. Yeah. I've had that where people talk to me like on Instagram and then we start texting and then they only talk to me on Instagram. I'm like, oh, something's you're off. You're juggling girls. That's fine. But. <laughs> Don't make it weird. I had an ex that would like literally ghost me every weekend and like disappear for weeks at a time. And I put up with it. so weird. Who was I? I know. Well, and then you like normalize it. You're like, oh, it's just one of those things, you know? I did. I was like, oh, he lives in Canada. He said his phone service isn't that great. You don't know any better. Yeah. At the time. I'm not fucking Canadian. I have no idea. (laughs) You're like, there's not even a time change. I should have known that. (laughs) I'm like, (laughs) I was so messed up. I was like, I don't know what was wrong with my little brain back then. But don't put up with stuff like Mm -mm. this, you guys. This is weird. Yeah. Um, It was only posted a day ago and there's not a lot on it but someone goes do you actually think you're in a real relationship and the next person goes i wish someone would have told me long before my abusive relationship in my early 20s that i deserve to be loved seen and accepted for who i am and the best way for that to happen and only way really is if you choose things for yourself first Mm. otherwise you will keep letting people treat you like dirt and honey you are not dirt. Yeah. You should want to be, you should be with someone who communicates with you in the way that you like to be communicated with. Absolutely. For sure. Absolutely. Account has been deleted. Oh, There's, I don't see any comments from OP. So I hope this was received well and like they can grow and find someone who doesn't fucking yeah. block them like this. It has a whole schedule out for them. So they know that's so weird. That's manipulative. I don't like that. It's very strange. Very strange. Okay, up next. Am I the asshole for suggesting my friend rehomes her kid? English isn't my first language, nor the one the conversation in question was held in, so sorry for any mistakes. My 22 female friend, 24 female, has a five year old son. The kid is, to say the least, difficult. She tries therapy, daycare, lots of educational methods, but he's wild cries a lot, destroys stuff, yells with her. Anyway, you get the picture. The dad pays pension, but isn't active in their lives, and she doesn't have many family members nearby, so she's pretty much alone most of the time to deal with this. Poor thing is destroyed. Whenever we hang out, it's clear from her physical appearance that she isn't very healthy, and she is always tired and anxious. She takes meds, but her doctor said that unfortunately there isn't much to do because there isn't anything wrong with her. It was an outside factor. It's really painful for me, as she's a close friend from many years. So the other day, she was in my house while the kid was in the daycare. She had a breakdown. 
started crying, saying she doesn't know what to do anymore, then this is when I may have been the asshole. (laughs) I said she tried her best, but maybe it was time to think of more difficult possibilities. To think if there wasn't anyone with whom the kid could stay while she took care of herself because she needed to. She looked at me quite shocked and asked, are you saying that I should rehome my son like he's a fucking dog? I said, no, don't take it that way. I was only saying that maybe it would be better for everyone, including him, if he stays with someone who could deal with him in some ways you can't. She yelled at me for saying that she couldn't believe I could even suggest such a thing and how heartless could I be. I tried to apologize, but she stormed out and hasn't talked to me ever since. Some of our friends are saying that I was an ass for suggesting that for a mother, while a few others say that she needed to hear it, even if it was hard. Am I the asshole? Mm, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> to rehome a kid, yeah. I don't know, just give him up, you know? Go surrender him to your local shelter and you don't yeah. have to deal with him anymore. I see, like, wanting to, like, encourage your friend to take care of herself. or mm-hmm. Like, so maybe it could have been done in a way where she's like, oh, let me watch him, you know, for these many days. And then, you yeah. Can go. But she doesn't want to deal with it. So she's like... I don't know. Isn't there like some sort of aid or someone like that can come over and help her like alleviate her so she can have some time to herself? Or- you would think so. I mean, he's in daycare and stuff like that, too. Mm. It sounds more like and it's it does say like she's tried therapy, daycare and lots of educational methods, but he's wild, yeah. cries a lot, destroys stuff like I don't know. I find this hard to believe that this kid doesn't have like autism mm. or um like ODD, which is like oppositional defiant disorder. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many other things that kids can have. Yeah. Like he could just have sensory issues yeah. where he's being overstimulated mm-hmm. and it's past that threshold and he just can't handle I'm it anymore. Like, yeah. You just don't know. So it's like, I'm surprised that she's tried therapy and like none of that has like helped come to like a diagnosis for him mm-hmm. if it is that bad. Yeah, And then it's like, well, if it's not diagnosable, like, is it parenting methods where he needs more mm, discipline or yeah. just structure? Yeah. Like, you don't know. But it sounds like the suggestion is like, maybe there's someone he could stay with for a while so you can take care of yourself. It wasn't. I think the friend kind of took it as, you think I should rehome him like a dog? Yeah. But it does more so sound like, do you have any other family? Like, can he go with grandma and grandpa? Yeah. And honestly, like, maybe dad would be good. Maybe he's missing that parent that father yeah paternal figure in his Princess, life yeah like kids need a village mm-hmm. and so it's weird that she interpreted it that way it makes me think someone else has said it to her before yeah like it sounds like some projection yeah well and then maybe she feels like something's wrong with her like the way she's parenting as a and, mom yeah so she's projecting that onto her friend when her friend's like Maybe that's what I'm saying. Like maybe there's like two days a week where like the dad watches him, so then mm-hmm. you can have a whole day just to you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because daycare will be like while she's at work, so she's supposed to see when she goes home. Yeah, and so I can't even imagine having to like juggle all that. You know what I mean? Or every other weekend or something. It's a lot. Yeah, I think this is like one of the things that scares me about having kids. Mm-hmm. Is I was such a terror. <laughs> I know it's gonna come back to me like tenfold. <laughs> I'm just like I'm not. I'm not mentally prepared right now. Yeah. It's hard being a parent. I know. I feel that. It's so hard. Because my brother was born when I was 11. So he's always been like my baby. That's why I've always looked at him like I had a baby. Yeah. And so now he irritates me because he's 18. But when he was a baby, <laughs> I like would tell my mom like, go take a bath. And I would like make dinner and like hold him. Like I loved my, I still love yeah. my brother. But um, so I've always thought I wanted kids. And as I get older, I'm like, if I have them, I have them. It's not a big deal. That's- but it is I'm scary. Yeah. I'm like in that same boat. Like I recorded a Father Knows Something episode with my dad last night and had like a mental breakdown bawling. Mm. And he was like, we were talking about kids and stuff that like what triggered it. it yeah. Was bad. But I was like, I don't know where I stand. And I feel like that's a lot of our generation. I agree. Like my friend Alejandra is the same way. She's like, I don't want to rule it out yet, mm-hmm. but I'm not really sure where I stand. Yeah. Is that normal? Like, is I that normal? So, yeah. I think too, because we're like, I'm going to be 30 this year. You're going to be 29 in like four days or so. Yeah. Right. I think, um, 
I'm like, when I was like 19 and in my first relationship, I'm like, okay, by the time, like telling my ex, I'm like, okay, by the time we were 25, I wanted to start having kids because I was so used to, that's what I saw all my friends doing. Like yeah. we graduated, everyone got married, started having kids. And then obviously we're gay. So like, it's going to take a lot more money and time to like have kids and buy a home and mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and so after we broke up, I was kind of like, if I have kids, I have kids. Yeah. And now I'm glad we didn't have kids with each other because she sucks but um, <laughs> for me you know what I mean I'm like I'm glad too because I want to be the best version of myself I can be to when I'm a mom mm -hmm. and so and I grew up with the best parents so it's also like that's a hard, high standard to have to live up to as well yeah. which intimidates me a lot your family's so amazing oh, they're just a bunch of sweetie pies except for my brother just kidding but um yeah <laughs> Donovan slander yeah <laughs> I'm gonna take him down on two hot takes but no it's it's scary and I think it's just because of our generation like and yeah. especially because we're a little bit older but I also I'm so excited to be 30 like when I turned when I was like until I was like 25 I was like oh my god like my life is over like I'm not doing anything yeah. and I'm wasting time and now I feel like I'm restarting my entire life within the last year and a half so that's why I'm kind of like if I get married I, I want to get married that's like we're I'm gonna do that but kids I'm like if I have them I have them if I don't that's okay yeah that's I'm in that same boat and I just like I think I'm not excited about my birthday party because it's just like a lot of pressure. That's anxiety. That's it's, what, yeah. I just, it's always like, is anyone going to show yeah, up? Yeah, I, yeah, I feel the same way about our live shows we do. Uh, I'm always like, I'm always anxiety riddled just yeah. about people coming. Cause yeah. like, I don't like that, that rejection I can't handle. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about like the age, but I'm really excited for 30 because you always hear too, where it's like your twenties are for grinding. Mm -hmm. It's a little struggle financially probably, but yeah. your thirties you're a little more established. Mm -hmm. You have all these. I'm just like, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, baby. <laughs> That's how I feel too. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, so she gets 27 so is usually, um, when your Saturn return comes. So Ooh. that's why I think a lot of celebrities haven't, a lot of them died at 27 or something like that. There's like a 27 pattern. club. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but there's the Saturn return where it's like this part of your life where like, I don't know the science behind it. So everyone's going to be like, if they do know, they're going to be like, you're wrong. But um, it's the way these planets, your planets line, like some, there's a huge shift in your life. So I never would have thought at 27 after being with the same person for eight years that we would break up just randomly and I was like what are we doing and so it was like I literally had to start my entire life over again I think Teffy told me that she was like it's your Saturn return I literally my life flipped on its head at 27 yeah I'm sitting over yeah. here job didn't you dropped. change your career and I couldn't get a job as no T, mm -hmm. so I started the podcast yeah and my life like that it I it flipped on its head mm -hmm. and it's scary what the hell mm -hmm. what is this so I can Saturn research? return I'm so I like, this my out. sister, she just turned 28. She'll be 29 this year. Wait, no. No, she's 27. That's what I'm all. It's your Saturn return. <laughs> but she's had crazy stuff I happen know. for her too. I mm -hmm. mean, the past year of her life has been woo, mm -hmm. just astronomical. Yeah, our whole family, and, honestly, with everything my sister's been able to do for us, like it's a completely different life. That's incredible. Wow. Okay, I'm really going to dive into this. I really want to get more into astrology. Yeah. Can it helped me with my healing uh, with my through my breakup era. Do you have a club? Yeah, it's starting right now. You're invited. Okay, maybe this is what you put on your Patreon. Ooh, okay. You have Dason's monthly astrology meetings. Okay. I just need to do more research. I feel like I know a lot, but not that much. You know what I mean? I feel I, I know nothing. And you could bring on experts every month to talk oh, astrology. Cute. Okay. Okay. So check out Two Idiot Girls Patreon <laughs> and Dason's Monthly Astrology yeah. Club coming soon. Coming soon. Drew loves astrology too. So that would be really cute. I've never met with an astrologer or like a psychic. I really want to. I that. really want to go to a psychic. Yeah. Maybe I should see if I can have one come to my birthday party. <gasps> That'd be fun. <gasps> fuck. Okay. I got to make some calls. <laughs> I was going to do tacos, like yeah. a little taco guy. But now I'm like, fuck no, mm -hmm. I want a tarot yeah, they're psychic. Like, Where's the food? They're, you're like, get your fortune read. <laughs> I'm doing this. This is incredible. This is incredible. <laughs> okay. Uh, the top comment on this one is from like an edit. So they added an edit. They must have added an edit right away because of the backlash. Okay. And so it goes edit. Since most of you are saying I should help her, I do. I usually help her with errands such as groceries, pharmacy, picking slash dropping her or the kid and house chores. The boy spends most of his day at a daycare. I did not suggest she gives him up to food adoption, only that she lets him stay with some relatives or on a sleep-in school while she recuperates. 
I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't either. Yeah. I don't think the asshole on this one. Mm-mm. I think maybe the language barrier, like... Translates it to be like, give them up for... Like, I, yeah. I, I thought that too. Well, and I also think kind of like what we said, the friend mm-hmm. is taking it really personally. Yeah. And like, it's fair. Like, yeah. you, I would too. As a parent. Yeah. yeah. I'd be like... Because you look at your, you know, your kid and you're like, I'm doing my best. And yet, ah, mm-hmm. he's still a little Tasmanian devil. Mm-hmm. Like, what can I do? Mm-hmm. That's why I felt like she was kind of projecting on her friend. Like, yeah. And she was like, I didn't even say that. Why are you saying that? <laughs> I totally see I don't that. think you're a bad mom. I think you just are a person. You're a human and you need help. We and there's nothing wrong with help. that. Yeah. It takes a village. It really does. And it it's what makes me so sad for people that are single moms and feel like they don't have any help mm-hmm. or family to rely on. And this is where like, it's so important to get involved in your community yeah. with neighbors, other moms that are single with kids your same age and mm-hmm. you pass them off and you do play dates and trade and whatever. But it's tough. It's mm-hmm. really tough. So the top comment then is from your edit. It sounds like what you were talking about is respite care, which is very reasonable. Maybe there's an organization that offers a summer camp for high needs kids. You could help your friend out by researching options like that. Yeah. And someone comments after and goes, yep, not the asshole. <laughs> um, and someone, it sounds like, has personal experience and just goes, and these programs are wonderful. I had a friend growing up who had kidney failure slash was going through the transplant process. Her dad was wonderful. However, everyone needs a break sometimes, even if the kid does nothing wrong. Yeah. And that's so true. Yeah, I think so. So true. Okay, last one, which kind of has like, a wholesome twist to it even though it's sad okay but i figured after all the trauma we just endured we kind of need like a little pick me up okay. to show like rainbow at the end <laughs> of the tunnel or whatever light at the end of the tunnel mm-hmm. god i really do botch sayings <laughs> okay so this one is also from true off my chest it is titled my bridesmaid accepted her role in a way that hurt my heart i asked three women to be my bridesmaids with a small gift I asked each woman privately at their homes while visiting so it could be a heartfelt personal moment between us alone. One bridesmaid, I'll call A, is a kind-hearted woman I've known for more than half my life who's been with me through some serious ups and downs, including the death of a child. I have known I wanted her to be a part of my wedding for many years. She even offered to host in her backyard when I was brainstorming budget venues. A doesn't have many close friends. But I'm not her only friend, and she's significantly older than I am, so she's talked to me about plenty of weddings she's attended before. I just assumed that she'd been a bridesmaid before, since she has long-term childhood friends who are married. She's even talked about helping with setup for weddings, hence my assumption. But when I asked her to be my bridesmaid, she burst into tears and said, quote, You're so sweet. You don't have to make me one of your bridesmaids, though. Confused, I asked, quote, why wouldn't I want you to be 